From the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700. Hello everyone, I'm Wes Talon and from the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700 on DCTV 23. Thanks for joining me. After seven years on the job, Douglas County School Superintendent Dr. Gordon Pritz has announced that he's retiring at a very young age. <laughs> Younger than he should be able to. Dr. Pritz joins me now to talk about this milestone in your life. Congratulations. Thank you, Wes. I appreciate it. And um, I appreciate the uh, compliment on the young age. I don't, <laughs> I don't think your facts are straight, but that's okay. Are you really going to do this? I am. I've, uh, I've given it a lot of thought and a lot of prayer, and uh, I was actually uh, uh, planning to retire a year ago, mm -hmm. but uh, had some good conversation with our board about some key initiatives that were on the horizon for this year, and so uh, we agreed uh, another year would be in the best interest of the district, and I, I hope that it has been. And, uh, but after this year, I'm, I'm ready to go okay. after 40 years. Is it 40 years, but is there anything in particular? Why now? Well, for me, uh, you know, I, I heard once that you don't retire based on your age. You retire based on events in your life. And so, you know, I'm just at that point where uh, I am at the 40-year mark, which, you know, uh, is kind of the max in, in the state of Georgia for benefits. But... Uh, that aside, I've just uh, I feel like uh, I've contributed uh, to the betterment of the school system over the last seven years, and that uh, we're in a good place um, as a school district. And um, you know, I've got grandkids now that have come on the scene, uh -huh. and uh, so it's just a, a good time for me, I think, uh, overall, and and I hope for the district as well. Okay, you said 40 years. You have been teaching since 19. 77. 77, yeah. Okay, why yeah. did you choose education as a career? Well, um, I had, uh, it kind of uh, occurred to me in my uh, late high school, early college years that uh, I enjoyed working with kids. I was, a, uh, my summertime job uh, that helped work my way through college was being a lifeguard and teaching swim lessons. And through that, I just uh, discovered what I thought was uh, kind of my, my gift, and uh, that was to, to reach kids. And so uh, I was uh, motivated to, to seek out education through that and uh, was an elementary ed major and taught elementary school for my first six years. Um, but also did some coaching, which I enjoyed, athletics. And uh, so uh, the combination of the two things was, was uh, good for me. And so it's kind of what got me into it, and it's just been... Uh, just been a blessing to me my whole life in terms of uh, a, a career. And your dad was career Air Force. He was Air Force chaplain. And and doing uh, that, did you ever consider military? Uh, I actually, uh, my three older brothers all went through different branches of the military um, during the Vietnam era, mm -hmm. uh, all in Vietnam at the same time. But um, I, uh, I did try to get in the Air Force Academy, but uh, math was not my thing, and so not for a lot of people. Uh, so so uh, <laughs> not, uh, not an option for me, but uh, that kind of put the end uh, to my uh, aspirations to go into the military. But um, I guess if I have any life regrets, that's maybe one, that I, I didn't serve my country in the military at some point in time. But I, I like to think I've served in another way over the years. Well, let's talk about that. You've been in education now for 40 years. You said you started as an elementary school teacher. and. Uh, you went from elementary school and, and then you progressed in grades up to high school and then you uh, went into administration as assistant principal and then a principal and then a associate superintendent. I mean, you've done right. the whole gamut on, on this thing. What is, and it doesn't have to be at Douglas County, what is, out of the 40 years, what's your best memory? Wow, that's, uh, wow, that's, that's yeah, a tough one. Yeah, narrowing it down yeah, to one, yeah, one. that's tough. Um, you know, I think g generically speaking, I'm not sure that there's uh, there's some very strong memories of both good and bad. You yeah, know. I'm not going to uh, ask you about the bad ones. You know, but uh, I think collectively, it's those relationships you build with people, whether it's uh, colleagues in the field 
or uh, more importantly, the, the kids that you uh, work with and teach and coach. And so um, for me, in, in, at my age, I, I get the opportunity now to, to hear back from a lot of those kids and um, them express to me you know, the impact I made on their life in a positive way. And so I think as you go through the profession, that's really why we're here in education is to, to serve others and to, to, help, to help kids. And so when I get that affirmation that I did that uh, along the way, and, and I'm sure I could have done a better job at that, but, you know, that's, that's probably my most positive uh, memory and, and, and experience. And when they come back and they have kids of, your, of their own who are in the schools and they talk to you about that and then they leave and you go, gosh, I feel old <laughs> because well, they're yeah, already. And that, that happens often, in fact. Several times uh, over the last seven years when we've brought folks in to recognize in, in board meetings and through the superintendent spotlight, a couple of times some of our teachers have said, you may not remember it, but you taught me at. And so that always, uh, that always gets your attention. That gets it yeah. on, on that yeah. thing. Well, let's talk, let's narrow it down to the last seven years you've been here mm -hmm. at, at Douglas County. Um, there have been a lot of challenges oh, yeah. that, that you've had here. Um, <laughs> The biggest one, I, and it's not the biggest one, but the biggest one that I continually hear about is how we've handled the weather. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ice, the snow, the buses, the rain, and all like that. And over time, you know, we've, because of the emergency management hat that I wear, we've worked through an awful lot right, of these, right. these things on that. <laughs> Talk about your weather challenge that yeah. you've had. Well, um, you know, we, we all remember the 2014 event. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, we get a little, bit of, uh, uh, a little bit of amnesia, I think, sometimes on what really happened. But I learned a long time ago that uh, I'm not an expert on that and everybody else is. And so there's no decision that I can make that's going to please everybody but ultimately I have to make a decision on that and it's a big decision, an important one. And um, I think what we learned from the 2014 event was that we needed more timely and accurate information, that we were not being provided the information we needed to make the best decision. And so from that we made the best decision that we could and I took full responsibility for that decision um, at the time with the information we had. And the bottom line is we got every single kid home safe. We did. Eventually. Now we spent some nights in some schools and I spent my night in the office, but we got every child home safely and every employee home safely. And so, you know, that's where I feel um, uh, contented that we made the right decision, ultimately. Um, but we take responsibility. I take responsibility for my decisions and I don't shy away from that, never have. And uh, but you know. we've also learned and we've also got new things in place. Sure, sure. You came in to the Douglas County school system in the middle of the recession. And finances, budgets, things like that have been, uh, have made a huge impact on your seven years here. Mm -hmm. Talk about these budget cuts yeah, and how yeah. you handled that. Well, uh, I've said often that I probably picked the worst seven years to be a superintendent, but I didn't pick that. Uh, the Lord placed me where, where I am, and so uh, knowing that, I just uh, did the best I could with the lack of resources that we had. And it took a lot of people sacrificing, uh, in, uh, primarily our teachers and our employees. Um, I am proud that we made it through the recession. Uh, we weren't able to do any kind of raises or anything for five years. In fact, we did furlough uh, days for a good portion of that time, but ultimately we came through it. We have given uh, raises two straight years now, and through it all, we, n we never cut a single program, particularly in the area of arts and athletics, when many districts did. We gave our employees the step increase raises every year when many school districts did not. Uh, we never cut instructional days. We kept those at 180 when many districts did not. And we were able to uh, improve our instructional achievements along the way with less resources. 
So uh, it was a huge test, and it was uh, certainly a learning experience for me. But because there were so many uh, people in this school district who have a heart for what they do and a heart for kids, uh, they banded together and they, they got us through it. Um, I took some criticisms along the way, but that's the nature of my job, and I, I don't have a problem with that. But uh, I, f I feel I can say that I always did what I thought was the right thing, and um, I think the school district is better uh, for it at this point in time. Well, one of the things you just said is that academically, we continued to progress even during the recession. Graduation rates are up. They are, yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, College and Career Readiness Performance Index. Mm -hmm. CCRPI. Yeah, yeah, I can't even remember that. Right. I can remember college yeah. and career. That's up. Uh, you've started, and those are statistics, but they, um, the kids are doing it to create the, the statistics. They're mm -hmm. graduating and they're, they're learning and they're, they're doing well there. What was behind the uh, creation of the magnet high schools? Well, I think um, we, we had some initiatives that were, um, some were top-down directed, but not very many. Most of our initiatives actually uh, started at the grassroots level where we had ideas come from the schools and we uh, embraced those and supported those the best we could. And that was the case with the magnet program. We had the International Baccalaureate Magnet at Douglas County High for several years before mm -hmm. I arrived. And, and that's an excellent uh, program. It's the shining star of the school district. But, you know, in this day and age of uh, competition and uh, striving to attract uh, um, people to your school district, to your school, to your program, um, to your team, you know, those are things that we have to put ourselves in a place where we can compete. And so I think our other uh, high schools just realized that, you know, we, we can do some of that same kind of thing. And so the obvious one was the, the, the performing arts or the fine arts magnet at New Manchester High School when it opened be just because of the way the facility was designed and built. Uh, so that made sense there. And we, we had a new principal there transferred over to uh, start that school. And so Ms. Kraft and her staff did an ac excellent job of beginning that magnet. And that just kind of got things rolling a little bit. And then we, uh, we got the, the federal grant to uh, turn around Lithia Springs High School. And so we had some resources that we weren't mm -hmm. expecting to help us uh, start a magnet there. And that's our STEM magnet, our science and technology, engineering and math, which now is a state accredited and nationally accredited and a shining star i think in the state yeah the first 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 and, one uh, in the state to, to be both yeah. to be both yeah and so uh and then from that uh chapel hill and alexander kind of had this idea for ap magnet at uh, chapel hill and then you know the uh, the, the magnet at uh, alexander where they're uh, you know doing some great things over there as well so I think they all were kind of generated from, uh, uh, you know, from a grassroots level, and then we gave as much support as we could. But because it was the recession, we couldn't put the resources and funds into it like we would like to in a magnet startup. So they really had to do it alone, uh, with no additional resources in the first year or two of each magnet. And then finally, we were able to provide some uh, funding for transportation and, f and uh, you know, the uh, supplements and those kind of things. So uh, proud of that. I think it, it gives kids options. And I think some of the other things we did were enhancing the program at the College and Career Institute mm -hmm. and, the, and some of the enhancements we did at the Performance Learning Center. I think all of those kind of came together almost in a perfect storm to uh, kind of hit the shore with our graduation mm -hmm. rate going up substantially two years ago. And I think it was a uh, a result of a number of different programs, not one in particular. But, and then of course the state changed some rules on the, on the graduation test, which helped about 5%, but we jumped 12% with our graduation rate two years ago, and we've maintained that since. And so that's important. Uh, you know, kids, the safety of our kids is number one, but then the graduation from high school is the, the next most important thing we 
we should be working towards. And so uh, we're real proud of that, that we've got ourselves to where we're the second highest graduation rate of districts our size or larger in the state of Georgia. So we'll keep working at that. And every graduating class is different. Mm -hmm. So that, that number can shift, but we hope it doesn't shift too much uh, year to year. Well, part of the, you know, why I brought up the magnet schools is now, you know, and plus the CCI and the PLC, you know, you've got these different options for these kids so right. that they can, you know, career paths and, and, and different pathways within the schools, right. like CT, uh, computer training, we're using acronyms that I shouldn't be using here, computer uh, and your marketing path and, and things like that, that I, I think we're giving so many of these kids options through what has happened during this past seven right. years. But you've also had to go through accreditation. Right, right. Uh, because it doesn't do any good if we've done all this stuff and then the kids were not an accredited school system so sure. the kids can continue on into college. Right. And we've just finished our s probably second accreditation since you've been here. Yeah, the yeah. second one. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's, not fun. <laughs> right, 2012 and then again in 17. And, and that was one of the initiatives that I referred to early on in our conversation the board saw on the horizon and felt like they would rather have the, an experienced superintendent in place when we went through that uh, this year. So um, we, we prepared for that. It took a, about a nine to 10 month preparation time. There was a lot of work involved on the front side of that to mm -hmm. gather data and to evaluate yourself basically is what we do and then we give the visiting team of and I think they, they had about uh, seven or eight folks come in and spend three days in uh, doing interviews and visiting schools walking into classrooms talking with kids and talking with teachers and administrators and so that three-day visit was uh, their uh, determination as to how we whether the way we evaluated ourselves was what they saw and so uh, we were very uh, pleased with the results uh, of that uh, accreditation visit back in January. Uh, in fact, since the 2012 visit, they have actually added a, a scoring component where you actually get a score uh, so that you can compare yourself to other districts that have been evaluated over the last year. And we were extremely um, uh, excited to get our score of 308, which 308 doesn't mean anything. But the average score is typically about 278, and so we were well above the average, and, and our, uh, the, the head of our visiting team said he rarely does he see a score in the 300s. So we were extremely uh, proud of that, uh, that uh, visit, and it really was an affirmation for us of what we were doing was uh, paying off and that the hard work was uh, be beginning to really show itself through our results. One of the other initiatives for this final year, the extra year that you stayed, right, was uh, an East Blast referendum. Two of those. Two of those, you've yeah. gone through two of those that, um, why did you feel like the East Blast passage uh, last November, or one November, it was? Last March. Last March, yeah. earlier in the year during the primary. Six, 16. Yeah, yeah. Uh, why did you feel like that that was so important? Well, a couple of reasons. I think number one, and not necessarily the most important, but very important is that it provides us a another funding mechanism or funding resource to do things like add on classrooms, to, to uh, uh, renovate schools, to uh, buy instructional materials, to pay off debt. And so uh, very, very important to have that funding mechanism in place particularly in the midst of the recession when all the other funds are being cut. And so uh, we were very fortunate in 2012 for the public to approve that SPLOST and we've uh, SPLOST 4. And so we've been uh, uh, keeping up with the things we need to keep up during SPLOST 4 and paying off debt at the same time. And so a continuation of that funding mechanism being in place was critical. And so that, that was important. But the other thing I think that a SPLOST does is it lets the public demonstrate how they feel about the school system. And we, we passed that with right at 70% of the vote, which is the highest we've ever had on a SPLOST. And I think that's, uh, again, another affirmation that uh, the, uh, the people in our community 
trust and uh, feel good about what's going on in the school system. We obviously know we can always get better and we'll always work at getting better, but uh, I think that vote uh, affirmed for us that you know, we're, we're headed in the right direction. I think when the, um, when the campaign, for lack of a better term, of the, toward the East Blast Five, the one that's in effect now, uh, was the removal of the, a lot of the portable classrooms, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. temporary classrooms that were right. out beside mm -hmm. so many of our schools. We've seen to have significantly reduced that number. Well, we have, and you know, I mentioned the importance of student safety earlier, and uh, not that good instruction can't go on in a portable classroom. I taught in mm -hmm. one for a couple of years, so, uh, uh, but they are not ideal, and uh, if you can, and they're also not the best and safest of places in, uh, you know, bad weather times. Severe weather, yeah. yeah so uh, if we can uh, eliminate them uh, as much as possible, that's a good thing, and we've been able to reduce them dramatically. Uh, the ninth grade academy 30 classroom addition at Douglas County High helped us get rid of a, a stack of those that had been there for, mm -hmm. for decades probably. Uh, so we were glad to see no portable classrooms at, uh, at Douglas County High. We'll be building a, a similar type of facility at Alexander, which is our next highest portable amount, amount of portables at a school. Uh, so we'll be building that in the next couple of years through SPLOST 5. And, um, that'll eliminate those. So we've reduced that down dramatically. Um, but in a district our size, you, you know, you're probably never going to totally get rid of portables. If you do, it's probably uh, that you've overbuilt and, mm -hmm. and maybe not um, efficiently spent the money on, on classroom space. But uh, we're in a good, good place right now with that, and um, I think it's even going to get better over the next couple of years as we add an addition to Lithia Springs Elementary and then to Alexander High School, and then to Chapel Hill Middle. Well, there's been quite a few changes to the physical plant. Yeah. All the right. way around, new right. gyms here, additional classroom space. Right. And well, one of the, you know, you, you uh, referenced the accreditation. One of the things that in the 2012 accreditation visit that they noted as a uh, suggested area for improvement was equity at our schools both in technology and in facilities. And we had two high schools that only had one gym. And I say only, uh, back when you and I went to school, one yeah, gym was probably fine. One gym fine, was just fine. Back when you and I went to school, we probably didn't have all the sports teams that we have, uh, mm -hmm. both for male and female. And so uh, one gym at a high school nowadays is really um, not a good thing in terms of safety. Because you have, particularly in the wintertime when you have your basketball practices, you have six different teams trying to get practice in and invariably somebody has to come in at six o'clock in the morning and be on the road and in the dark and that kind of thing or stay real late. Um, so we were able to add a gym at Chapel Hill and at Alexander where now we have two gyms at each of our high schools. Uh, paid that through bond money and um, that was a, a huge improvement for I already mentioned the, the Douglas County High ninth grade academy that we added on so that was uh, very, very important addition. Um, you know, we, we put uh, uh, synthetic turf in all our high schools. We had it at New Manchester High School when it opened, but again, uh, we just felt like that was an investment and a cost savings over the long run uh, and just allows for greater use. Um, that's not just used on Friday night football uh, games. It's used uh, in the spring extensively. It's used uh, by the band. It's used... Uh, by PE classes all during the day um, because it, when you just have uh, one field and it's uh, a natural grass and it just takes a beating and, and so this uh, cuts back on costs with watering and uh, water conservation and, and effort to paint the fields and prep them for uh, athletic events so we just felt like that was a, a good investment and we're proud of that improvement as well. Well, you just mentioned that the 2012 reaccreditation also talked about leveling the playing field in technology. And just within the last few days, we've announced the computer science for all initiative. Right, right. Yeah, real excited about that. We're the first school district in the state of Georgia to uh, roll out a uh, computer science instruction from K through 12th grade, kindergarten through 12th grade. 
Uh, we put together a task force about nine months ago of uh, staff, teachers, and a and, uh, variety of folks to look at that and to work on uh, development of a curriculum. And with our partnership with uh, Georgia Tech and Google and Code.org and the State Department of Education, we were able to uh, launch that here recently and appreciate the courthouse hosting us for that big Certainly. event. And uh, we're real excited about that. We think that's going to be uh, a huge plus for our, for our district and more importantly for our kids because we all know the importance of uh, being computer savvy, technology savvy, and uh, our kids will get that start from the very beginning uh, in kindergarten. So excited about that. Uh, you know, we rolled out the 21st century classrooms mm -hmm. in all our 1,700 classrooms across the district. So we have the interactive boards in each classroom, the computers, the, the, uh, the, the projectors, uh, the uh, ladybugs as they're called, the old overhead projectors back mm -hmm. when you and I went to yep. school, but they serve it as a document camera type of situation. So we've got that through every one of our classrooms and that's, uh, that's important for our teachers, makes their job easier, but it also provides our kids that ex exposure to technology use and instruction. Uh, opens up many, many doors of, of ways to provide that, but it also makes us more competitive in track, attracting teachers. We uh, are in the midst of a teacher shortage, and if we don't uh, make our district uh, attractive in a lot of ways, uh, whether it be nice facilities, whether it be turf fields, whether it be computers, we won't attract the, the teachers and the families that we want to attract to our county make our schools better. So very, very important in the big picture look of, of what makes Douglas County appealing. And to I think that is probably going to be your legacy, is that not only have you gotten us through this recession, no staff cuts, everything else like that, but you have prepared these kids for the future so that as you leave, they have a bright future. So let's yeah. talk about your future for a moment. Where do you go from here? <laughs> well, uh, you, you mentioned the legacy, and I'm not sure I know what that is, but uh, I, I'm sure that all those, those things and provisions for kids was being done before I got here. I know it was with the previous uh, superintendents and, and leadership. But uh, my whole uh, hope in coming and, and given the privilege to come to Douglas County to be superintendent back uh, uh, in May of 2010 was the hope that I could come and, and leave here. And I told, the, I told the school board back then when they were interviewing me that my hope would be that I could retire from Douglas County Schools, you know, at the end of my career. And, you know, lasting seven years for any superintendent's not, mm -hmm. not a bad feat. But, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I told them I wanted to leave it a better place when I, when, than I found it. And I think we've done that. And, it's it's not about me. It's not me. There's a lot of people that have worked extremely hard and continue to do that every day. First and foremost, our teachers who have the toughest job. Um, they're the heart and soul of our school district, and uh, they inspire me when I get out to, to visit each week into the schools. And so they'll be the ones to keep the legacy going, whatever that legacy is. And so I, I feel good about that. We've got great teachers. We've got great leaders in our buildings. Um, and uh, I just feel good about the, the, the school district. And I'm, and I'm sure the school board will do a great job in picking the next superintendent. Um, but for me, I'm, uh, I'm going to um, not commit to anything for the first six months and try to check off some bucket list things mm -hmm. that I need to do and would like to do. Um, and enjoy the Most of those are adventures, you know, and enjoy the grandchildren first and foremost. And then, uh, you know, uh, after about six months, I'll reevaluate and see uh, what's ahead, and I might just like doing what I'm doing at that point. But we'll see. Uh, it's a it's a nice problem to have. Nice problem to have. Well, whatever you choose, we wish you well. Thank you, Wes. Congratulations on your retirement. Yeah, and thank you for all you have done for me and for the school district these last seven years. Your uh, your support and your um, help with publicity of of what we have going on has been a huge part of uh, our district's success. So thank you for that. And to your whole crew that puts all this together, mm -hmm. they've become good friends. And uh, we'll miss you guys. Appreciate that. Thank Thanks you. for the kind words. Yeah.
And that's the news for now. From 8700, I'm Wes Fallon. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you next time.